ஹே ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் மிஸ்டர் ரிஷப் ஐஏஎஸ் அவர்களோட நம்ம எடுத்த இன்டர்வியூட சீரீஸை தான் நீங்கள் பார்த்துட்டு இருக்கீங்க ஸோ டூ பார்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் த சீரீஸ் இஸ் ஆல்ரெடி அவுட் இஃப் யூ ஹவின் செக் இட் அவுட் த லிங்க்ஸ் ஆகி வேணும் இந்த டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் பாக்ஸ் பிலோ அண்ட் இந்த தேர்ட் பார்ட்டில் அவர் நீங்கள் நிறைய டைம் கேட்ட ஆன்சர் ரைட்டிங் அண்ட் இன்டர்வியூ எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸை பற்றி ஷேர் பண்ணியிருக்காங்க அண்ட் அது மட்டும் இல்லாமல் இந்த யூபிஎஸ்சி ப்ரிப்ரேஷன் ஜேர்னியில் நான் இவ்வளோ கஷ்டப்படணுமா அப்படின்னு நம்ம நினைக்கவும்ல ஸோ இப்படி நம்ம எடுத்துகிட்டு போக இந்த ஜேர்னி நமக்கு எந்த லெவலுக்கு நம்மளோட போஸ்டிங்கில் ஹெல்ப் பண்ணும் அண்ட் முக்கியமாக அவருடைய செல்ஃப் ரியலைசேஷன்ஸ் இந்த மாதிரி நான் முக்கியமான விஷயங்களை நம்ம கிட்ட அவர் ஷேர் பண்ணியிருக்காங்க ஸோ டெஃபினட்டாக இது உங்களை பயங்கர பாசிட்டிவாக மோட்டிவேட் பண்ணும் அப்படின்னு நான் நினைக்கிறேன் ஸோ ஓவர் டு த வீடியோ கமிங் டு மெயின்ஸ் பார்ட் ஸோ நம்ம எல்லாருக்கும் தெரியும் மெயின்ஸ்ல நம்ம என்ன ஸ்கோப் பண்றோமோ ப்ராக்டிஸ் பண்ணணும் பட் வாட் இஸ் ரைட் டைம் டு ஸ்டார்ட் ஆர் ஹவு டு ஐ ஸ்டார்ட் நான் எதுவுமே படிக்க ஆரம்பிக்கல ஸோ இஸ் இட் நெசசரி ஃபார் மீ டு ஸ்டார்ட் அப்படிங்கிற மாதிரியான ஒரு ஆட்டிடியூட் ஆகஸ் நான் காலேஜ்ல எல்லாம் நல்லா தான் எழுதியிருக்கேன் காலேஜ்ல ஐ வாஸ் அ டாப்பர் ஸோ எனிவே ஆன்சர் ரைட்டிங் உட் பி ஈஸி ஃபார் மீ ஸோ ஆல் தீஸ் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் மல்டிபிள் திங்ஸ் தட் இஸ் கம்மிங் இட் ஸோ ஆன்சர் ரைட்டிங்க்கு என்ன டைம்ல ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணலாம் அண்ட் ஹவு சுட் அ பர்சன் பிராக்டிஸ் ஆன்சர் ஆன்சர் ரைட்டிங் சம்திங் ஒன் ஷுட் ஸ்டார்ட் ஆஃப்டர் இனிஷியல் ஒன் ஆர் டூ ரீடிங்ஸ் ஆஃப் த புக் ஓகே ஒரு என்சிஆர்டி இஃப் யூ ஹவ் கம்ப்ளீட் ஒன் ஆர் டூ ரீடிங்ஸ் ப்ராபப்ளி இஃப் யூ ஆர் ஸ்டார்டிங் பை த மந்த் ஆஃப் ஜூன் then by december or somewhere you have to start your answer writing and uh, answer writing is not that it's it's answer writing is not exactly about your content our all college examinations all of your focus is on content adavad the exam mode last mode we will be keeping on mugging up things by hearting things all these permutations combinations all these equations we will mug up everything we will go to examination or we will vomit out everything that you know it's in your head we we'll come out of it we'll forget everything then we will move on but what people think that this is how you you have to write an upsc answer but that is wrong it's not how you write an upsc answer for upsc answer is a very structured way of preparation or or answer on the or or topic la discuss panu or or answer or or question ode approach vera mari irukku if a question is asking you to critically analyze that means that you have to take two sides of the topic you have to discuss the merits and demerits or you have to discuss the pros and cons you have to critically analyze that what are the positives in this and what are the negatives in this and finally you have to give a solution so not a solution but you have to finally you know tell what you want to do and if it's an elaborate type of question then you have to elaborate that particular concept suppose they are asking elaborate on coral reefs then you have to elaborate on coral reef. you have to write whatever you know about coral reef if the question is about detail if they are about analysis then you have to analyze you have to analyze this is you have to analyze you have to do a swot analysis probably structure strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats if they are asking you analyze about the iron and steel industry in analyze about iron and steel industry in uh, tamil nadu then what analysis will you do you have to do analyze about the st- uh, strength the strength of iron and steel industry in tamil nadu the weakness that the iron and steel industry is facing the opportunities that the industry is facing and the threat possibly if you are asking about analysis the trade pattern between india and china how will you analyze the trade pattern between india and china you will need some facts okay and based on those facts you will know the what's the trade deficit and what's the trade deficit between our both countries what's the major item of import of china and what from india and what's the major item of uh, import of india from china and if that import is not available then where we would go So there are a lot of points. These facts together, you have to put it together. You have to do analysis, and that's how your answer writing goes. It's not dumping of the knowledge. And the people, uh, they think even after clearing prelims, they think that they don't do the answer writing. They think that uh, this is very easier to do. We will do it easily. It's nothing but just dumping, just dumping of the knowledge. So we will prepare till main last before week of main. it even keep on preparing till we are entering into the examination rooms we will do it we will dump everything that we know so that's not the case they are not going to clear mains even after four attempts that's for sure that's not how things work for mains answer writing it's a very structured manner it's a very proper way and one has to start very early and you she you or she has to do a lot of work for the mains answer writing as i said you uh, in a first attempt what we used to do is that i along with four or five of my friends we used to sit together every afternoon we used to take up five machines and we used to write answers for the five questions we used to keep time but and i did it for the next two three months the first time i couldn't clear my mains by three marks 787 was the general cut off in 2016 i got 784 
I got to clear uh, my mains by three marks, and I felt that I left one or two questions. So, you know, if I had attempted those one or two questions, I'd have got an interview call with my first attempt attempt itself. I I knew what mistake I was doing, and in my second attempt, uh, certain things didn't go really well, so I couldn't clear in my second attempt also. But in the third attempt, I after I did two attempts, I was sure that what this exam means. So I cleared. I mean, I consolidated all my notes for my optional everything before my prelim uh, prelim exams also. After prelim examination started at three months, all I did was write answers. So um, I was in Shankar test. I would have wrote some thirty thirty five main answers. Okay, I used to write online. I used to scan them. I used to send it to them. And I was in Delhi, so Delhi one or two institutes. I used to write answers, and I was staying with my friends. Along with my friends, I used to do answer writing. So that uh, that small phase between the prelims and mains, I did some forty, fifty. I mean, not forty. I would have done some thirty, thirty-five tests. Each GS paper, I would have at least written some seven or eight full uh, full length tests. So that you know that gave me a very clear edge. I got some eight hundred and seventy-seven. Was my uh, main marks? Eight seventy-seven was my main marks out of uh, you know thousand seven fifty. Out of thousand seven fifty, eight seventy-seven was my main marks. So I got a really very decent score. I got four forty-six in my GS. So all the answer writing which I did, but led to a situation where I got four forty-six in my GS. People would not get that much marks in GS. So getting above four forty, it's a dream mark for you. In uh, if you are getting above four forty, which means that you have really mastered your answer writing skills. So that's what the point is. You have to do this answer writing very early, and really don't think that you know you can come to the examination hall directly and you can dump your answers. That is not how the system works. And if you're in that uh, thing, means you're going to waste your attempts and you're going to get yourself more and more stressed. Uh, when hmm. it comes to interview, very few thousands have got that experience. So how was your experience, and uh, how was it on the whole? See, so interview something. Uh, Let me tell you, you won't have an opportunity to speak with five very eminent people in your most part of your life. You won't have that opportunity. You won't have an opportunity to meet a higher vice marshal in in your life, and probably even if you meet, the higher vice marshal won't be giving you forty five minutes of his time to sit and to listen your nonsense and uh, your. I you mean, so you have to earn a place to go and sit and speak with them. Your interview is all about, uh, you know. expressing yourself it's all about expressing your heart show who a person you truly are you cannot make up uh, you know you cannot have some cosmetic changes you cannot change yourself overnight to go and sit in the interview your thoughts they come out and they come out really well how much ever you you stop yourself 45 minutes surrounded by five people they keep on looking you they are there they have a collective experience of over 300 years you cannot go on live before them they will catch you they will catch you to say something now and you uh, you know you reverse it or if you do not have the integrity of what you are saying then they will catch you they will point you that first you said like this now then you said like that how are you how are you changing your point and you will stumble they will pressure you you know they will see that how a person you are see it's nothing what is a diamond a diamond is nothing but a coal which you know which took uh, under pressure Which which was able to handle uh, heavy pressure for a very long time. That's how a coal becomes a diamond. It's all just carbon, correct? So at the end of the day, interview is about uh, showing yourself who a person you are, what you have done. See, there are people who come to interview who have really done amazing. They have got IITs, they have gone to AIMs, and they have you know they have done amazing things in their lives. And there are people like us who have not who are from a very modest background who have not done much, but we. You know, interview gives an opportunity to show who you are. It's just that you did not get an opportunity. But that doesn't that doesn't mean that if you don't, if you get an opportunity, you won't be able to do any stuff. Okay, so interview is about showing yourself that what a person, as a person, what you are, what's your capability, what's your thought process, are you able to train? There are certain people who are able to accept what they are doing done wrong. They are seeing people whom they can train. In your interview, if you are going to an interview, they will see that how adaptable, how malleable, and how ductile you are. Or you are a person who are able, we can train you. Or you are like that very stiff person who don't want to get trained. You want such people who are energetic, are able to apply your mind. Application of mind is very important. It's not that there is no textbook solution. You come to feel there are no textbook solutions. For example, 
uh, one day I was doing an inspection and my inspection here, and during this inspection, I found that there was a particular minivan which was carrying 38 people. Okay, uh, a minivan has a permit of only 18 people, and we were following the social distancing norms even in such public transport. We should not have carrying more than 12 people. Well, it was carrying 36 people. So I was at that point, and there are no textbook solutions that if such thing happens, what will you do? And as an assistant collector, I don't even have the powers to, you know, impose fine. The impose fine on our people is with respect to the regional transport officers. They have to do that. I don't, I can't do it. So what I did, a simple solution is I asked them to, you know, half of them, I said that you get down, let this vehicle go, drop those people and come back and pick uh, other people up. I'm not letting anyone to do. So this was, it came the newspaper the next day and my name came and all the newspaper appreciated that I took a very good stand. So the point is that application of your mind and the situation, what will you, how will you think and how will you respond? That is very important. And that really comes out in your interview. They know that whether are you a person who is just a bookish person or are you a person who is practical. If given a situation, will you be able to take a practical decision or you will just go behind the books and the theory and the rules and you will keep on saying that no, something cannot be done. The point is that they are training you so that you could get some things done which has not been working for the last many years in our country. Our country is still very backward. Just seeing Chennai and Bangalore is not our country. It's definitely not our country. Our country still needs a lot of improvement. Being in the field, I'll tell you, still people are struggling to get an income certificate or they're still struggling to get a caste certificate or a nativity certificate, which they should ideally be getting. You know, people are still going, going around behind these small, small offices here and there. You are there at the top, you are getting the IAS because you know, you have been given that I as the three letters so that you could somehow clean the system and somehow make sure that people not have to haggle and saggle to get their basic entitlements. So this is what being expected in an interview. And if you are a person with that right thought process, which I hope that two or three years of preparation of UPC will anyway yeah, deliver that process, then for a person interview won't be a very tough thing. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, coming to uh, the date of result, till date, you would have got multiple experiences being in Lavasna, going to Bhagat Action, and now being an assistant collector for a district. So, uh, can you say a few important things like which really excited you and uh, which felt like, okay, I'm a civil servant? So. See, after uh, interview, so after results, uh, one thing is that you get covered in a lot of newspapers which you have never been covered in all your life. That is something and I was never a topper in my 10th or in my 12th or in my graduation. I was never a topper, not even an average. In fact, uh, if I show you my engineering mark sheets, uh, in, my third, in my third semester I had some five backlogs. Uh, in my fourth semester I had some five backlogs. In my, even in my third semester I had four backlogs. In my fourth semester I had some five backlogs. In my fifth semester I was writing somewhere around 14 papers. Writing backlogs from my second semester, third semester, and fourth semester, I was writing in my fifth semester. So I was not a very, I uh, know I was not a very bright student. So, but the point was I was in a very wrong field. I was I shouldn't have been you know, become an engineer. But I was in something which my heart didn't really, you know, understood the process. But still, I felt that this is something I could do. Then you clear your examination, you get your name in all the newspapers, you kind of get featured in certain televisions. A lot of people call you, they felicitate you. All these are fine and good at the point of time. And when you go to Lavasna, you get, uh, you know, somewhere you you kind of get to know that you are the top of the world. And you go to Lavasna, you see that there are 180 of those who are at equal to you. In fact, all the everyone who got selected into a batch, everyone are equal. There is no services higher or no services lower. Then you see that this is just, uh, you know, a phase of life. Now comes a real challenge. Then you start doing this, then you go to Bharat Darshan where you get a lot of experience. You go and meet so many people. I was in Kashmir at some thousand, fifteen thousand feet altitude. I got up at, I was sleeping in a night and uh, Pakistanis were shelling. And uh, you know, I was sleeping next to a bunker. I was actually sleeping in a room and suddenly shelling started to happen. Shelling, uh, no one would have, you have ever experienced shelling. But if you have ever experienced shelling, it's a, not a very good thing to experience. Like suddenly, you know, the bomb starts to burst and all the sounds comes. And I got up from my 
uh, sleep and there was a major who came to my room he said that he, he took me to a bunker and he showed me that if at all in night if some shelling happens which is happening if it goes too much then what you have to do is you have to climb down from your room and you have to go and sleep in that bunker and uh, i was in kashmir uh, somewhere in the month of december so when the cold is your bone chilling cold and sometimes you may even get frostbite that was the amount of cold that was there in kashmir there was no water which was in a water condition everything has turned ice okay and that bunker it had a lot of water and all the night i was praying to myself that let pakistan in not shell let pakistan in not shell let me sleep this night let me sleep this night so there was one experience you don't get shelling and uh, we kind of used a lot of firearms in sars ak47 which i have not done it before it was the first time during army attachment with the indian army that uh, we used this firearms i saw the bofors gun and other guns the field guns that we said the field guns and uh, the artillery i was attached to artillery units so i was able to see artillery units that was something you know that is something you would never get to experience unless you are getting into the service other than that you may not have an, another opportunity to go and see all those things service so what it gives you it gives you amazing exposure right from you know i for the first time in my entire life i went and i saw a fighter jet i saw sukhoi m30 i saw mirage 2000 i saw tejas i saw all these fighter jets which i have never seen i have saw and i have seen how the cockpit looks where does the pilot sits how does the engine looks and all this all this has been a dream for me from my childhood all we see to see the fighter jet going up in the sky how often do we get an opportunity to go and see and probably sit in the cockpit of a fighter jet okay i got that opportunity i got a sukhoi am to see a sukhoi sukhoi is such big compared to mirage you know all this experience uh, no words can define one of the gives examination who comes to it that's when he will he or she will enjoy each and every thing and above all you are widely respected by each and every one and in coming to district i am seeing a lot of people people who are senior 20 years 30 years to me they are they, are, they know so many things about that still they respect me because just because i come from the indian administrative services and one has to earn that respect and one has to earn that respect all his life okay you cannot just because you are an is you cannot just uh, uh, sit on someone has head or do like that you have to really be a you know you have to really be a very calm composed person a person who is down to earth only a person who is down to earth he will be able to learn things in his life and you know he will be able to keep on learning that's something you have to do so that's what i have my experience ஆமா <laughs> god will give you some or the other way where you can express yourself i seen a lot of people are doing a lot of amazing work okay they can become a good teacher one shankar sir said that he couldn't become a teacher but uh, opening a coaching institute he could make hundreds of people as is officers okay so don't think that this is the end of the world it just a bend if you are not trying this examination but when you are in this examination enjoy the journey give your 100% to it because you are there and you are going to do it only once you are not going to do it again but if you have given it 100% even if you fail no that thing won't be there in your heart that you didn't give your 100% and you know something to be very frank 100% no one can ever give okay that 100% is still a myth but try as much as you can don't uh, divert yourself from things which are not wanted at this point of time so a simple exercise of uh, coming out of facebook and instagram kept me sane yeah kept me sane for a very long time and i have got that of habit that even if there is no mobile phone today i don't really you know it doesn't really matter for me if i'm not checking checking my whatsapp or if what i'm happening on my for me the newspaper is more important than what's coming what news is coming on twitter and facebook so that's something i have built some good habits on some good friends spoke i'll to this world i mean to india a lot so you get a lot of opportunity enjoy this journey that's what it is if you don't enjoy this journey if you think that it's a you know it's a bane on you or you have been cursed to do upsc 
and probably you'll even after clearing the examination you won't cherish it but if you are enjoying the service no enjoying the journey then when you clear this examination then you will see that how how momentous that victory is so victory comes when you when your journey happens that's when your victory comes and when your victory comes that's when you think how momentous it is okay so for that you have to do a very good journey your journey is very important so my only thing is enjoy your journey don't uh, you know divert yourself if you have chosen it uh, have all the fun that you want so that's the end of part three of the video and this interview series with mr rishabh ias so in the series la neenga nage vishayangal therinjittu mukpinga appdi na nanikkiren so whatsoever please to say us in the comments below and ungalku innum engalta enna na vishayangal solanumo adhiyam maakama comment section la leave pannunga and nage pudu pudu vishayangala neenga kattittu irundirpinga la edhukagum wait pannadinga poi adha implement pannunga and i'm sure neenga ellagume ungalude and the goal la definitely achieve pannuvinga so all the very best for that and if you people want to message him or me personally எங்களோட சோஷியல் மீடியா லிங்க்ஸ் கீழே டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் பாக்ஸில் இருக்குது யூ கேன் ஃபாலோ அஸ் தே அண்ட் தேங்க்ஸ் அ லாட் ஃபார் ஆல் யூர் சப்போர்ட் தேங்க்யூ ஸோ மச